Well, as we welcome in our NHL Network insider, Elliot Friedman, nobody should be surprised that we are starting this conversation by talking about Carey Price. I feel like Habs fans are pretty nervous right now. The expansion draft is tomorrow, and Carey Price is somehow available should the Kraken decide to select him. Uh, what are the chances we actually see that, Elliot? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> first of all, no wagering anybody. I don't want anyone losing money on account of what I'm saying here. All I can say to you, Jack, I know I'm supposed to be this great insider who knows everything that's going to be going on. But, um, you know, I have to tell you that uh, one of the things I've heard is that they've done a total deep dive on him. That everything that they could know about Carey Price and his health, they have done the work on, on it. And at the very least, they've considered it. They've run through all the options. You know, I've had some teams tell me today that they think that they – We'll do it. I've had other teams tell me today that they think that they will pass and maybe take Brett Kulak from defense instead. So I, I think we're in a situation here where Seattle is keeping everyone guessing. I wish I could give you an answer, a definitive answer. But as we sit here right now and do this, I think Seattle still got everybody guessing. Well, listen, I didn't get a chance to chat with you during the commercial break, so I'm just going to take a hard left here and say you must be excited for the expansion draft because you've, like, had a makeover or something. Your hair is cut. It's styled. I mean, what to get? What, I must know what this choice, where this choice came from to switch up the look here. Jackie, divorce is expensive. <laughs> Well played, per usual, uh, Elliot. Well, listen, it looks good. I like the look. I think you should stick Thank with you. it. Um, <laughs> outside of Carey Price, though, and I'm sure we'll spend a lot of time speculating about him over the next 24 hours, what are some bigger names that you're hearing that Seattle might be targeting? Well, I, I think that one of the guys they're definitely looking at is um, is Yanni Gord from uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Yanni Gord is a guy who is getting a lot of attention just because he's a really good player. And even though people talk about him, is he a third liner? I think he's much more than that. I think in, if you take a look at, at the way that they use those guys, that great line in Tampa during the playoffs, they were basically their second line. And, you know, he's a guy that I, I don't think Tampa Bay is too eager to lose, but I think they know that they're – potentially going to lose them. And I think the thing we're all wondering is, is this a guy who could be taken for Seattle or are their teams calling Seattle and saying, you know, we could send them somewhere else. I think also a guy like Jaden Schwartz. I know the sexier name out of St. Louis is Vladimir Tarasenko. I'm not convinced the Kraken are mm -hmm. going to do that. Um, you know, Jaden Schwartz is an interesting guy because I think there's a lot of interest in him. I think Colorado is interested if they lose Landeskog. And I do think they're going to take another run at that. Um, I think that a team like L.A. is going to be interested as they look up to beef up their top lines. I think Vancouver's had some interest in Schwartz, and I think Seattle does too. And I think the bigger question is, is going to be is, you know, is Seattle going to take him as a, U uh, is going to take him as a UFA or is, you know, Seattle going to be in a situation where they take someone else and then try to sign him again, uh, try to sign him again later. So Schwartz is an interesting one for me too. Oh, I like that. Um, you mentioned Gabe Landeskog. What is your read on that situation between Landeskog and Colorado right now? You know, Jack, you're like a lot of other people there. You've negotiated contracts before for, uh, for you know, for your time in, in media companies. And yeah, as it. you know, so, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> like sometimes, sometimes these decisions, uh, they become emotional. And I think the Landeskog one has become emotional. I think he's, mm -hmm. he's felt that Colorado hasn't gotten to what he thinks is the right kind of offer until very late in the process. I think it got very emotional last week. I think the good thing that this allows and is that, Everybody can take a timeout. You know, everybody can take a deep breath and they can reset and they can refocus. Um, and, you know, assuming he doesn't get signed by Seattle, I think they're going to take one more run at this. Um, I th But I think there's a point that Colorado is willing to go to and, and they're not willing to go past that point. Uh, my podcast partner, Jeff Merrick, he said on the podcast this morning that he thinks there could be a $60 million offer out there for Landis Cog. I think if that's the case, I don't think it's going to be in Seattle, in, in Colorado. I just, I don't see Colorado going to that number, but I do think if there's a willingness on both sides to work, I think they're going to take one more run at this. I miss Jeff Merrick. Send him my best. I have not seen him, uh, I think, since the draft in Vancouver, maybe? It's been a while, but uh, send I, him I my best. I find this hard to believe. Nobody misses Jeff Merrick. <laughs> hey, you said that, not me. But uh, 
My producer tells me during the commercial break, Jack Eichel is trending, and apparently you are the root cause. Uh, what are you hearing about Jack Eichel and where he could end up? Oh, boy. Um, social media, it's its just crazy in there. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think with Jack Eichel, um, you know, I, I think that Eichel is hoping that there's something worked out by the draft. We'll see. You know, Buffalo has done a really good job of keeping this quiet. Um, I, I'm really careful to put, like, teams to this because I think things change at this time of year. I just heard that teams like like teams like teams Anaheim and Calgary and L.A. Had, had kind of backed out, whether they didn't think it was a fit or they didn't like what the ass were. Um, and, you know, I think Minnesota is very much there. I think the Rangers have always kind of kept doing this in kind of a stealth mode. I always think, uh, Jackie, that there's teams out there that I'm not aware of, but, you know, it's getting close. And, you know, Jeff asked me what I thought, and I said the, the teams I named were kind of like Minnesota and the Rangers that mm -hmm. I, I think right now. But those teams that are out, all it takes is one phone call to get them back in. And I hate to say anyone out because then they trade for them and I look like a big idiot. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, you do make a good point. A lot changes in this business in 24 hours. So you say one thing and five minutes later, it could be different. So uh, we'll leave that as it is. Eventually, we will all know where Jack Eichel is headed when something becomes official. Uh, one more for you. Zach Hyman uh, could also be rocking a different logo next season. What is the market for a player like Hyman? Well, you know, I thought it was interesting yesterday, Barkley Goodrow, and although it's not official yet with the Rangers, it's, it looks like it's all done six times, uh, 3.6 in that area. That's a great deal for Goodrow, by the way. I'm happy for him. Um, I think the players who play like that are going to get big deals, and I think Hyman's at a higher level. Now, you're showing Edmonton highlights there. There's a lot of belief that Edmonton is the team that has really zeroed in on Hyman. I'm wondering if he comes in around Josh Anderson's number, which is 7 times 5.5. We'll see. I, I, that's what a lot of people are kind of talking about is Hyman's area here. And we'll see what Edmonton or somebody else does. Well, the Leafs will certainly miss Zach Hyman. Uh should he leave uh Elliot, they... i think they're hoping they offered jackie they offered him an eight-year deal not yeah. as high an aav i think they're hoping that he could potentially come back to them oh okay leafs fans will like to hear that there's maybe you're saying there's a chance so we'll see how that pans out maybe there's a chance you'll make your bed for your next hit uh as well elliot hey, well you know what i took a couple of days of r and r and i can guarantee you this when i'm relaxing i don't make my bed <laughs> <laughs> All good. I, to I didn't make my bed this morning either, so there you go. Uh, I appreciate the time. Enjoy the uh, expansion draft tomorrow. All right. Take care, Jackie. Have a great week.